So, so this this week, uh, this week. I hear we have international stupid this week. With this show, normally the stories fall on on one of two sides. They are either just cluster fucks of of circumstance crashing upon itself, like fucking cars launched into dentist offices on the second floor, or they are in just incredible feats of idiocy. So massive, you don't understand how people could be in the moment and make those decisions. Really? I'm intrigued. And this week, everything is pretty much firmly on that side. Nice! Somehow. It, hey, it's Olympics time. So we need Olympic stupid. This, they, they have, they have, they have delivered, hey, I think. Peggy, there's treats up here. You just don't trust me now? No? All right, let's get our intro going. Fuck you. You're done. I know, you're not going to come anywhere near me. Dottie's the brains of the operation. She's like, no, you're talking to that big box. Fuck you. You're going to grab me. <laughs> Peggy is very pretty. <sighs> Dottie's the brains of the operation, for sure. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And it is the week after Valentine's Ready. Day. Oh, God. <laughs> that is the best response. Yes, it, it, it is that. Um, yeah, the, 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 Valentine's Day is the day, obviously, when a lot of people make grand romantic gestures to the apple of their eye. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that goes a little... Wrong. Yeah, and sometimes... It becomes a federal issue. You're really just going to sit at my feet and give me the big eyes now? That's what we're going to do? Yeah, okay. To impress a woman, he arrived in a helicopter to take her on a classified mission, Official said. It was a lie. Candy Apple Red Helicopter descended into a North Carolina soccer field one evening last November on a top-secret mission approved by President Trump himself. The three-star general was to escort a woman from the grounds of her data analytics firm to a classified briefing at a nearby military base. Yet Christian uh, Desgru was not an army general, but an auto mechanic. And he was, unsurprisingly, not on a clandestine, mi a clandestine mission authorized by Trump to fly to Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Desgru, 57 was indicted last week and charged with impersonating an officer on duty, carries a maximum penalty of three years in jail and a $250,000 fine. Department of Homeland Security Special Agent Tony Bell testified at a detention hearing Monday that DeGruy falsely claimed to be a senior Army officer when he hired a helicopter and pilot, um, donning what appeared to be an Army flight uniform with three black stars, indicating... I'm sorry, right. wait. Yes, a Homeland Security agent rented him the helicopter? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, the, 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 he was testifying because he arrested the motherfucker. Oh, okay. Um, donning what appeared to be an Army flight uniform with three black stars indicating a rank of lieutenant general, the GRU had the pilot land a Robinson R-44 helicopter at a company soccer field um, after the pilot picked him up near his home in the area, DeGru surprised the woman with a helicopter flight when she simply expected him to arrive in a vehicle at the company. Bell said she, he believed the false pretense and promise of an important briefing with a lawyer was an attempt by DeGru to romance the unnamed woman, who knew the man for about 20 years and said she believed he was experiencing marital problems. It is unclear if she believed his claims of being a general. I was going to say, if she knew him for 20 years, yeah, I feel like you'd know if somebody was a three-star general. It, it gets better. This is a weird-ass story. It gets better. The helicopter took off, but DeGroot wasn't sure where they should go, so they circled Raleigh for about half an hour. Oh my god, he didn't have a plan? The pilot added the woman claimed her headset wasn't working properly, 
saying she could not hear him or DeGruy through the flight. I'm not convinced the headset had problems, uh, the pilot Dan Miller said, describing the woman as, quote, extremely nervous. Although he chalked Is up this up. not kidnapping? Well, it's false pretenses, surely. Because once she realized what was going on, she was not in a position where she could leave. No, no, she was not. So it's pretty much like this is kind of the dog catching the car. Now what? Right. What What are you going to do now? Also, look, dudes, I know like everybody lies on their dating profile. Everybody shaves a few pounds off their actual weight, adds an inch to their height. Or three Whatever. inches everybody, three inches if you're the president. Everybody embroiders the truth a little bit. But like there are things on which you will fucking get caught. Yeah. If you're worth it. Yeah. Like you want to date this woman, so you put on this pretense of being a general. Let's say you wind up dating her. She's going to find out you're not a general. And then fucking what? And also, part of this is the act of claiming to be an army that's general. Crime. Yeah, that's crime. That, that's, yeah, that's a federal issue. And, and if Dan was here, he'd be fucking apoplectic right now. <laughs> because Dan fucking hates like people that pretend to be soldiers or veterans. One second. Okay, you noisy little bastard. Come here. Come here. I'm trying to do stuff. <laughs> I'm trying to do stuff, and you're being a little noisy butt. We could hear him. From Come on, get a treat. <laughs> Come up and get a treat. Don't know what he wants. All right. Sorry about that. It's like other cats are getting attention. Fuck that. Ugh. I want the attention. Come here. What All the thinking? adoration is mine. Well, no, it's not. He he wants to fight me. Hey, oh, 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 you brought the whole blanket down. <clears throat> Peggy, well, now you get all the trees. You want to fight me live on the internet, buddy? Yes. You, want to fight you were me? looking at other cats. I saw you. Now you have to die. He's so cute. He tries so hard. He tries so hard. Okay, I have to do the show, buddy. You'll have to. Meanwhile, because I, you know, I got my, I got my battle wounds from from the shelter kitties. You'll have to try to eat my hand later. I, I, I... No, I need to eat it now. I don't live by your fucking schedule, human. You live by mine. Go play, okay? Don't give me that look. Go play. No. This is the look he's giving me. How dare you? That. I mean, you are being the worst right now. Go play. You are being terribly insolent. Go play. Silly butt. All right. Anyway, continuing on. Grady. 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 Grady, can you, can you not, can you, can you please? <laughs> no, I think we should do the rest of the bit with him slapping you in the face with his tail. Can we not? Just a tail from off camera. What? <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I love you, Grady. Did you figure out what? Thank you. Anyway, moving right along. What what really makes it about these stories this week is some of these, the elaborate lengths they go to to accomplish things and then completely not accomplish them, even though they put in so much work. Like the guy who's currently dying of sepsis in China because he tried to get his phone back from a toilet. Oh, this is... Can get the phone back? This is, this is way beyond that. Um, now, I want to point out, this headline says... Drug smugglers busted using butt implants to smuggle cocaine. What? They, that's not exactly correct. 
These okay, were not because we had the woman with the breast implants full of cocaine once. These were not implants. These were butt falsies. Huh? They they constructed a fake butt and sewed it into their pants and sewed it into their pants, and they even made it flesh toned, although very lumpy and flesh toned. The implants were attached to swimming trunks fitted with just over two pounds of cocaine. We've broken down to around 5,000 individual portions of the drug. Police also arrested a man at a nearby train station who was there supposedly to be buying the cocaine. I have a problem with this plan that is not the problem you probably expect. Okay. How do you... How do you take cocaine <laughs> right yeah not that i'd know or anything not so i just no experience. really hope these smugglers didn't eat anything spicy <laughs> before their trip <laughs> or any like hot dogs or asparagus my cocaine smells funny yeah my cocaine smells a little odd I, don't like, I feel like that would harm the quality of the product a little bit. <laughs> it's slow roasted. Hickory oh. smoked. Why are you staring at me? I just... it. Uh, that, how did you really think this was going to work? That the is... dumbest part is they could have gotten these pre-made because they sell... <laughs> All manner of pants for women with butt padding. That is the saddest looking ass. Yeah, look, it is really lumpy. I guess look. in swim trunks it wouldn't matter. It's not like you're going to tell. You could tell. I'm sorry. If someone's ass has like wrinkles and angles and shit, <laughs> your ass doesn't have angles. If That's it's from Nom. Just. I. <laughs> I mean, at least they didn't put it inside a person this time. Because that chick with the breast implants, I, re I really worried about. I, but understand, someone put all this together, went to the elaborate lengths to do this for a lot of money. Two pounds of cocaine is a lot of money. All of this, and they did this, and they thought it looked good. This is, this is the room of drug smuggling. <laughs> You're tearing me apart, DSA. <laughs> Someone looked at this and went, yeah, this is this is what we're going with. This is perfect. We got this. Ugh. I'm I'm just I've mm. Well, all right. That that was one thing, but speaking of even more elaborate methods to break the law. This this may come as a surprise to a lot of people, but just because you own a plot of land does not mean you can build whatever you want on it. No, there's like zoning and right. permits and stuff that you have to do. Right. You If you want to change what the land is owned for, you have to try and do that. And it's not easy. If you you can't put residential plots on commercial plots. Right. Things, so you can't, like if I wanted to build a new porch on my house, I'd have to get permission for that. Like, you can't expand an existing structure without permission. So it takes time and effort to do it the right way. But it's legal. Or you could just say, fuck it, and throw all that time and effort into these shenanigans. Couple caught hiding home behind fake garage doors to get around planning laws. Look at oh that God. shit. That's amazing. Couple have been fined for using a fake garage door and a high fence to hide a small secret home from a council. Um, Rita Herzala and Hamdi uh, Almarsi uh, breached planning regulations and were eventually caught in October 2015. Planning permission was granted for development in 2007, which included conditions stating that car parking facilities, including the garage, should remain permanently available permanently. 
Um, the garage will now have to be restored to its former use after a series of follow-up visits. Council resulted in discovery of a series of, series of planning breaches. We did this. What? Ours was just a room. Like we at, we turned two thirds of our garage into an extra room and just left the first third of the garage with like a false back. Well, yeah, but you just made a and false. I wouldn't room. tell that story if my parents were still alive to get in trouble for it, but they're not. You just made a false room. Look at this goddamn. This is right, some... we weren't renting it out. Like we just need like my sister needed her own room so we pared the garage down and made a little room back there this is some james bond shit yeah. like the garage door was still functional it was just a really fucking small garage this is the, the whole front of it is a fake that <laughs> comes down so you could go in how, like how did nobody notice when that person had to come home <laughs> oh i don't know I just, it's... Peggy, you're breathing so loud at me. She's just staring there, breathing really loud at me. Like, I know, I picked you up, but I also gave you about 20 treats, so I think that should even out. No, it's... Stop glaring at me. I'm going to grab you again. Okay, bye. You have to figure that once the court costs and the fines and everything else is assessed and the money they spent doing this, this get smart inspector gadget bullshit, yeah. You have to think once all of that was done, it would have been less time, less effort, less money just to get just, the fucking permits. Right. Well, it sounds like they couldn't get the permit because it's a garage and they have to have a garage. Ugh. Well, then sell that fucking thing and buy one where you could put the fucking... Or you don't get to have a tenant and I'm sorry. And at this, and now they're going to come and check up on your ass because you broke the law, and they know. Can you imagine what a shitty, tiny little place that was to live too. It looks like it too. Because I mean, garages are not big, and British garages are even smaller because British right. cars are even smaller. Yeah, because British people don't feel the need to overcompensate with their vehicles the way we do. Well, that and it, uh, gas is way more expensive. You've seen the video of Obama's presidential limo trying to pull out a 10 Downing Street, right? <laughs> I Making remember like that. Making a 116-point turn. <laughs> oh, I've I've driven over there. It's 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 well, I've ridden. I didn't do the driving because it's on the other we side. We are going to Ireland in March. Dan is finally going to meet the rest of the in-laws. And uh, I'm trying to explain driving over there to them. He's like, oh, I'm from the South. It's fine. I'm like, no, you don't understand. No. Like, yeah, in the South, you have some roads that are kind of dodgy. But over there, like, there's roads that are kind of dodgy. They're two-way roads. The width of one car on a cliff by the ocean with no divider. Shit's crazy. Like, just good fucking luck. And at any point, a herd of sheep could legit walk across that shit. <laughs> Oh, let's let's. Oh, God damn it. This next one, this should have been in last week's show, but it got moved to this week. And it's still this 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 gave me a goddamn migraine, I swear. Um, You ever been in a college class and your teacher teaches you something that you know is wrong, that everyone fucking knows is wrong, but they're the professor and you have to fucking deal with it? Yeah, that's why I failed Irish lit in college, because I had a professor from Italy and I got in a fight with her every week well this this I think is this is I, I swear to God when I got this story I had to check to see if this wasn't just some kind of staged thing online where people were faking this because that does happen I, I, when I first saw it I'm like that's not real and then other story that yeah it's it's I could not fucking believe this one. It it made me so sad. SNHU fires online professor who didn't know Australia is a country as well as a continent. Well, technically, isn't the continent continent called Oceania because it includes New Zealand as well? 
Southern New Hampshire, Southern New Hampshire University has fired an online adjunct professor and apologized to an Idaho student after the professor gave the student a failing grade and insisted that Australia is not a country. I mean, no, technically it's a penal colony of death. <laughs> Legally, we call it a country. Lauren Keene, assistant vice principal of communications for the Manchester based university. Acknowledge that a story about what happened to SNHU online student Ashley Arnold of Idaho is true. Keene said SNHU did not identify the professor involved at the student's request. Said the teacher does not live in New Hampshire, does not work on the campus. Uh, Arnold is a 27-year-old stay-at-home mom completing an online sociology degree from SNHU. As part of the final class, she was required to compete, complete a project comparing a familial trend in the United States with its effects in another country. Arnold chose to compare social media use and pick Australia for her country. But the professor had marked her down in several sections of the assignment, resulted in a failing grade because the teacher wrote, quote, Australia is a continent, not a country. Arnold sent back convincing evidence that Australia is, in fact, both a continent and a country. She contacted the administration. Arnold later got a revised grade of B+, and the professor was fired. How the fuck? How the... Okay, I'm told Oceania's the region, and Australia is both the continent and the country. So, okay. How? How the... How the... College professor. I mean, I know it's what seventy percent uninhabitable because of desert, and the rest of it has the most horrifying wildlife we've ever known. But it's but that doesn't change the fact that they have a fucking parliament. It how I would be like, professor, can you name for me the countries on the Australian continent then? A Google, a fucking Google. What are, what are the countries in Australia? Yeah, that, that's uh, a fucking Google search. A fu- like it's bad enough that there are people that think that Africa is a country. Our president thinks Africa is one big country. He's probably going, and to that's try- bad enough. Fucking no. He's probably going to try to invade Wakanda. Well, I just it, th- to this day, I say that Obama should have left behind a fake Wakandan birth certificate. <laughs> In the resolute desk. I did. Mm, this. Mm, how did college professor? That, like, not only are you, it's not just like in college, it's you're teaching college. How do you get to teach college and not know that there's an Australia? Well, the thing is, I'm pretty sure what it is is. You get to be a college professor. You you are a college professor, and therefore, d- d- I know what's going on. I don't need anyone to tell me what's going on. I know what's going on. I am a college professor. How I, dare I, you? I know I things. Know. You could use Google. <laughs> I know things. You don't know things. I'm paid to know things. You're not. So. <laughs> And that was the fight I had with that lip professor because she she made us read Angela's Ashes. And like the first class, she's like, so you can just see reading this book because it's an autobiography that like all the stereotypes about Irish people are true, that they're all depressed and they drink. And I just felt my hand going up. She called me and I was like, yeah, it's like when I watched The Godfather and realized that Italians are all pasta eating mafiosos. And the semester went downhill from there. <laughs> I'm like, and she she fought with me. She's like, no, this is an autobiography. And I'm like, it's one guy's autobiography. Oh. But she was, you know, she was the professor. So moving on. I I have you ever put, you get to the TSA, you're at the airport, you put your stuff on the conveyor and it has to go through the scanner. You ever get that little pang of going, don't mess with my shit. That's, that's my, don't, don't fuck I with always, my shit. I know for a fact that I'm a fucking law abiding citizen who is carrying no contraband of any kind and still my chest tightens up like I packed 16 pipe bombs. Well, there's that. And there's also, 
that's my shit. That's my expensive shit because that's my electronics that I keep with me. That's my yeah. computer. My don't. I'm all. I'm like, don't mess with. Don't. That's my shit. Don't. Mm. So I get the impulse from the next story. This is from China. I get it. I just would never. The picture is amazing. I just have to say, I'm gonna let Tara digest it for a second. That's an actual picture, Tara. Is that like the picture is amazing? Is that like really highly stylized porn? Nope. Chinese woman joins handbag in X-ray machine. Oh, that's not good for you. Staff at Donegan Railway Station in southern China were uh, shocked to find the silhouette of the train commuter on their X-ray monitors. Online video showed the bizarre incident took place on Sunday during the Lunar New Year travel rush. After climbing off the conveyor belt, the woman checked her bags and left. Extraordinary x-ray images show the woman kneeling on all fours behind her luggage, still wearing high-heeled shoes. It is unclear why the woman was so anxious about her handbag. Many people in China carry large amounts of cash when traveling home for the Chinese New Year. I, she was told all bags had to go through the x-ray machine, but she refused to part with her handbag. Her solution was to join her belongings on the conveyor belt, and she climbed out the other side. I mean, I get, yeah, if you have valuables, but I don't know if the x-ray machines in China are the same as here. Or where did this take place? Is this in China? It's China, yeah. Okay, so I don't know if their x-ray machines are like ours, but ours are like five feet where you can't see your shit. Oh, what's, I, I mispronounced, I said Don again for some reason. It's uh, Dong Guan, my, my mistake, my bad. Um... There's like a five foot long tube where you can't see your shit. Yeah. And there's nobody inside. There's no gnomes in there. Who raid your stuff. Like, I know. They, they, all, all, no one's going to get in. There's not like a secret little hand compartment you can reach no. in. You can, you can follow it. Also, it's an x-ray. You it's a really powerful x-ray. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. All right. You... Like, have you noticed how when you have a medical x-ray, the tech leaves the fucking room? Yes. Because you don't want more of those than you need. Right. When they Because that's how you get all the cancer. Because it's radiation. Not superpowers. Cancer. Cancer. And not Deadpool cancer that comes with superpowers. <laughs> just regular old fucking cancer. I just... What is just that picture is amazing though. Their X ray machines must be different than ours because I couldn't fit through our, one of our airport X ray machines. I don't think certainly not on all fours. I'd have to lay flat. That is, that is the portrait of of an imbecile. That looks like a '90s album cover to me. <laughs> It like, could... pick the name of a rock band and put it on there in that, like, crackled typewriter font <laughs> and tell me you don't see it. Oh. Uh... Our Lady Peace. Oh, uh, I just, what? Oh, good God. And finally tonight. We have had many incidents on airplanes where people have had caused an emergency landing for all kinds of stupid stupid reasons i think and, and probably reality is going to challenge me on this soon possibly someday someday very soon but i think this is probably the without a doubt the stupidest reason we have ever covered this, I'm, mm. Somebody make that last one a Rectal Eels album cover. Wow. I'm just going to let, I'm just going to. See, gonna, this is what I was saying about the cocaine butts. I'm just going to let that, mm. 
fight over man's flatulence forces flight to make emergency landing. First of all, Alexandra Dabler, who wrote this story, dial back that alliteration, lady. Dial it back <laughs> just a wee bit. Pilot made an emergency landing after a fight broke out over a passenger who allegedly refused to stop passing gas. Two Dutchmen, cons cons uh, two Dutchmen sitting next to the flatulent passenger reportedly asked the man to stop, but he refused and continued to break wind. All right, that's, that's the first thing. Instead of saying, I'm sorry, I'm having stomach trouble, I apologize. He said, no, I'm no, a fuck you. I'm a fart if I wanna. So that was the first problem. Because I mean, to some extent, that's outside the realm of your control. You know, that, if that, you hit the broccoli buffet really hard, that would be one of those things where you go, "I apologize, my st I, I, I'm sincerely sorry." Not eat a dick. I'm a fart. Yeah. That's that's not the budget airline crew allegedly did not help the passengers after their complaint. So pretty much what happened after this is they went up and went, Stewardess, he's farting on me. So now it's a it's a family road trip with your little brother. And <laughs> you're like, what is she gonna do about it? Um despite well, a... we'll take him in the bathroom and give him a good squeeze. So this and that led to a fight between the men, despite a warning from the pilot. The altercation continued and forced the airplane to be div diverted to a Vienna airport, where it made an emergency landing. Police boarded the plane once it landed and removed two women and two men that the pilot reported as passengers on the rampage. The women, who are sisters, that were removed from flight, are now taking the airline to court, claiming they were not involved in the altercation. <laughs> so... This is even more like a family. I'm concerned about how many people in this channel don't know that you can hold it. You can. Are you just not far? You can't just not. You can. Clench. It's called women. Clench. Women live our lives holding in gas. I, so, but but it, I love these these two non-involved women. So this is even more like a family vacation. Well, you know, yeah. you have your two siblings are fucking... I didn't do anything! I didn't do anything! What the fuck? So now you're in trouble, too. Um, I just... You had to start a fight on a plane. A fist fight on a goddamn airplane. Over I mean, I can see where that would be in a, in a small space with recycled air. I can see where that would be upsetting. I can. Tara, if but there's only so much anybody can do. I'm I. Anyone trying to justify this shit? In because I have sat next. Well, to, I'm not justifying a fucking fist fight over it. I have sat next to many a horrible specimen of the human species, and I swear to God, if I knew I could just haul off and punch a motherfucker. I mean, you can. <laughs> you'll get arrested like these people. But you can. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I just it. <laughs> I mean, at least if anytime I take Dan out into a crowded space because he really doesn't like crowds, at least once during that time, I have to just pat him on the shoulder and be like, "Orange isn't your color, baby," because he starts to get that look where I know he's plotting how to kill every person in the room, and I'm like, "No, no, we don't murder the public, even when they're stupid." But man, I I mean technically you could, but you shouldn't. Even when I sneeze sometimes, I am very apologetic in public. Mm -hmm. It's just I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just how upbringing or I don't know. But the idea of when someone say, "Excuse me, could could you please stop? Stop. Stop farting, please." To, to just to not immediately feel a bit of, you know, embarrassment and go, "Oh god. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. That that pardon my butt." No, it, instead, of it, not to, to, to immediately go, no, fuck you, I'm a fart. I'm going to do it harder now. <laughs> fart, uh, farting intensifies. You know, it's... Stewardess, bring me 14 sodas and a beer. 
<laughs> I'ma do the alphabet. Oh. <laughs> What kind of ass? Everybody involved is an asshole. Peggy is sitting on the floor in the corner, looking forlorn and pouting. Your tower's right here. This, this is it's just this is like an asshole vortex. Everyone's an asshole. Yeah, there's no there's no hero here. Even the pilots, like all of them, get up. What the fuck did we do? We didn't do anything. We'll get the fuck out. Everybody get arrested. Just... Like, just drop the emergency gas mask. And... <laughs> That's... I don't want to Oh, the first airline that does that. The first airline that gives you the option for the gas mask. Would you like the oxygen mask? <laughs> they will make so much money. Because if, if you have to sit by someone who does not understand grooming... I once, have done this. Well, once we get a bad enough flu pandemic, that'll be the norm. Yeah. Once we get a bad enough outbreak of something, that'll be the norm. Because you won't be sharing public air anymore. That won't be okay. Welcome to dystopia. I guess I guess the first thing we learned this week is the if if the appropriate response in public is not no, I'm a fart. <laughs> Did Tara get a lot of sun recently? I don't think so. No. Did I just put on too much blush, I guess? Maybe. We learned that, yeah, I know you might not trust the security folks, but you can't go through the x-ray with your goddamn luggage. But you can. Again, you can. <laughs> but I wouldn't fucking recommend it. We've learned Australia... That's how you get the Hulk. <laughs> We've learned Australia is a country... And a continent. Something a college professor probably should have already known. Or at least Googled. We've learned that the best way to deal with zoning issues is not some sort of elaborate Batman concealing the <laughs> Batcave fake fucking motorized front door. No. You have too, many t too much time on your hands. We've learned if you're going to try to make a fake ass to smuggle cocaine, put a little more effort into it. Come on. Yeah. That that is that was I gotta show this again because this is the saddest ass. Don't show it again. That is that is that is that is a sad ass. Why would you not just that get is... a neck pillow and fill that with cocaine? I guess because they have to put that through the X-ray. Yeah, they 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 don't have to. You, that is that is yeah. just the saddest but. And finally, we've learned. Sure, you can exaggerate yourself a bit for your object of your affections. But you gotta think about what happens if you win. Yeah. You gotta think about what happens if you get the girl, because the girl's gonna find out. Like, are you just gonna keep up that ruse forever? That's not gonna work. The being, entire romantic comedy genre is built on that not working. Being a fake army general for the next six decades. That's that's not going to play out the way you hope. Bye, honey. I'm driving to the Pentagon. Just drive. You know, like, because I married a veteran, I now have a USAA bank account. And that's a veterans only banking institution and there there are certain benefits to being married to a veteran that you won't get but she'll apply for oh am i devo just won tonight i am the very model <laughs> level lying major general oh. <laughs> oh like you just gotta think your lie through you gotta keep your lie small enough <laughs> that either it won't come up or if it does it'll be funny and endearing that you told that lie and not going to jail yeah illegal and concerning i'm a fart <laughs>